Welcome to today's Smith and the World panel. I'm Meredith Courtney, the Director of Employer Engagement and Business Networks here at the Lazarus Center. We're so thrilled that all of you have taken the time to join us today. Students, prospective Smithies, faculty, staff, family and friends, supervisors, colleagues, and others. Thank you for joining us to hear from these outstanding students. The Smith and the World Conference is intended to celebrate and share students' off-campus learning experiences. You'll hear their reflections on how these experiences have impacted and enriched their academic and professional paths. Today is the third panel of the 2024 Smith and the World Conference Series, and we'll focus on business, finance, and consulting. Our students today will share stories about their experiences in strategic management consulting, microfinance for marginalized entrepreneurs, cybersecurity and banking, and financing for diverse businesses. If you've been following the Smith and the World Conference information, you'll know that we hosted our first panel on collaborative leadership design and innovation on January 17th, and our second on health professions last week. These panel recordings are available for you to watch if you were unable to attend. Future sessions will feature panels on arts, media, and communications, education, nonprofit, and social impact, government law and public policy, and STEM careers. Today's session will be recorded, so we ask that members of, of our audience on Zoom to please keep your microphones muted. We also encourage you to submit your questions for presenters using the chat tool. We will field questions after all the presentations are finished. So I, net with that, I am now honored to introduce our panelists. We have Daniela Pellier, Musa Ba, Ali Tute, and Simi Chima with us here today. And with that, I will hand it over to our first panelist, Daniela. All right, so for those of you on Zoom, you should be seeing Daniela's presentation right now. If for some reason you are not, please let us know. Thank you, Daniela. Good afternoon. Good morning for those that are in Europe or around. My name is Daniela, and today I'm going to be talking about this amazing opportunity I had in the summer of 2023, which I resume as a journey through inclusive finance in, and social impact at Banco de Open back in the Dominican Republic. A little bit about me, I'm a sophomore student athlete, and I'm majoring in quantitative economics with a minor in applied statistics. I'm originally from the Dominican Republic and came to the U.S. Uh, to pursue my bachelor's degree. Um, I have a strong interest in finance, especially in banking, but also in the sports industry, as well as quantitative analysis. With this, I want to give an overview of what was my internship. First, I have only eight minutes to give insights of how amazing was this, but it will take me over eight months to go through all the lives that Bank All Open have impacted. I embarked this incredible journey that transcended the realm of finance in the Dominican Republic and delved into the heart of empowerment, social impact, and personal growth. I want to give an overview of how is the Dominican Republic in terms of banking and informal unemployment rate. So you can see in the year 2022, the Dominican Republic had, unfortunately, the highest uh, rate of informal unemployment. This means that 57% of the people that are employees in the Dominican Republic are not registered or don't have any evidence that they're actually working. But what is most impactful is that 51% of both uh, formal employees and informal employees don't have access to banking or to credit. Simple things like requesting a loan or having a credit card that most of the, for most of us is easy to have access. 51% of the population in the DR don't have access to it. Now, Banco Al Open. In 1982, Banco Al Open began as a small NGO in Santo Domingo. The most special thing is that the, this bank was started by 16 women in the early 70s as an NGO, where these women leading enterprises were organizing raffles, bingos, and things like that to raise money and educate women which is the main focus of this bank. 
with the mission to promote the economic development of Dominican women and integrate them in their families into the formal economic system is how Banco Open is originated. The growth and financial performance of Banco Open is very appealing. El Banco de la Mujer, as it is known in the country, stands as the primary autonomous institution in the country dedicated to integrating the banked population into the Dominican banking system. Over 160,000 current clients and half a million women have been impacted. Adopen has enabled individuals from both the urban and rural areas across the country to access the banking se sector since 1982. Sec a second thing that is very appealing is that the total assets of this bank is over $100 million and the gross loan portfolio keeps growing. And lastly, it's a catalyst for social impact. Banco de Open inauguration in 2004, the NGO continues their operation, and they also have a center for financial literacy and workshops and community service. This was the timeline for my recruitment and application. I wanna point out that this internship was unpaid, and thanks to the Praxis Fund, I was able to pay for my fees for room and boarding, my flags to the Dominican Republic, and part of the workshops I, I was involved in. The first part, fall of 2022, and I'll advocate this to early exposure, was getting into the GFX class, where immediately I felt banking was for me and I wanted to pursue a career in financial services. By then, through early 2023, I brainstormed with my mentors back in the Dominican Republic and here with the Smith alums. After identifying Banco Alo Pen, I started the recruitment process and my application uh, for the Praxis funding. It was relatively easy to just get over and communicate with the HR department, the CEO of the bank, Mercedes Canalda, and send in my resume transcript and the most important question, why Banco Alo Pen? After that, I began my internship in June of 2023 throughout August 2023 and completed over 281 hours. My internship looked like this. In the left side, you can see the map of the Dominican Republic. Banco de Pen has over 73 branches in the whole country, whereas their areas are urban, rural, or even remote. The one that is highlighted in blue is the head uh, main office, where I spent five weeks. There I had the opportunity to be in the financial risk department, uh, the current risk, and in other, um, in the NGO and other visits to over 10 branches in this city. I also had the opportunity to lead two workshops at Monte Plata and La Altagracia, my hometown. In the right side of the slide, you can also see actual clients of the bank, which Adopen have impacted their lives. But you would like to know why I learned technical skills. Well, basically, I summarize this as data synthesis and reporting, credit risk assessment and management, and financial management and investment decision making. I was able to look through over 100 credit um, requests of people. But I want to take the look on, it's not about giving a loan. It's understanding the story and looking if this person is going to be able to first growth, second handle, and also just like provide for the families and just become a very business. In the financial management and investment decision making, I was able to work with the financial department to do daily analysis of the remuneration investments through the central bank and also the, the other regulatory institutions in the country. But the biggest lesson I learned was understanding the lives that Bank of Open touched. At the end, money comes and like it goes and comes. If you are giving loans to people just to get the profit from them, and at the end they don't, they are not efficient, they are not financially literal, the business is not making or accomplishing the mission. Here I had an insight of the microfinance sector. For many, this is not a very appealing um, sector. It's not a big corporation and it's not gonna give you billions of dollars. But Banco de Open has something unique. They encourage that their uh, customers don't have more than 35% in debt, which is just magnificent. I also had the opportunity to be a visiting intern at my hometown and give back. 
it was funny when I was doing the workshop and most of the people that were adults, um, they saw me as a child and they were like, we are very proud of you. And we are very happy that you think about us and give us this opportunity to succeed. As you can see uh, in the right side of the slide, I'm in a little bit more recycled. But something very unique about Banco de Open, you know that here in the States, especially if you want to go to a bank, either to request a credit card, uh, request a loan, you need to go to the actual bank or call them. In the case of Alopen, they have the mission to go to the client store. It's very, it's just like so unique and so inspiring how they don't matter how long or how many hours they will take to go to the clients. Uh, the business officials where you can see the picture, um, in this um, moment, we drove over like two hours just to go uh, to a customer and get only $30 for a loan. Like it takes us more uh, time, like so much time, gasoline and um, other costs, just like to make the customer feel that they're important to the bank. And that's one of the things that I really encourage um, people that are going through their journeys. If they want to go into finance, do it because it's something impactful and not because of the money or how productive the activity can be. With this, I feel, I have a strong feel that microfinance is a career path that I want to follow. And I also encourage you to, to, to discover. My internship reaffirmed my commitment to the Dominican society, the most disadvantaged classes, those with less access to formal credit and a small scale business, especially to women and how this uh, bank was originated. And now I wanna give thank you to all the family of Banco de Open that are currently watching this broadcasting and also to, the, to all the family of the Dominican Republic who I know feel proud that this story is being shared with you. Thank you. Fantastic story. Thank you so much. All right. Next up, we will invite Musa to come up and share your story. Make sure that this is sharing. It's not. Try that again. There we go. All right. And if you want the remote speaker, there it is. Hello, my name is Musia Raba, and I'm a sophomore currently majoring in computer science. And I'm here today to talk about my uh, Discovery One internship experience with Deloitte this past summer. So today I'll be talking about sort of how I found up found out about the opportunity, my experience actually doing the application and getting the offer, uh, what I did during the summer, and then, you know, sort of the things that it taught me and going forward in my life. So I wanted to sort of introduce Deloitte for those of us who don't know, like I did when I was first applying to the program. And Deloitte is, a, is one of the big four in the professional services world, which means that they actually make, you know, like they help make other companies more efficient and effective with their work. And they have four main areas, which is tax, audit, risk and financial advisory, and also consultant. I personally was in the risk and financial advisory division as a cybersecurity sort of intern. So I was, you know, helping give advice as in terms of those areas. And sort of how I found out about the opportunity was a very sort of roundabout process, actually. I was doing a J term experience because I sort of had nothing else to do that winter with uh, Smith and Deloitte facilitators who were helping us sort of, you know, get the training that we needed to get a cybersecurity certificate. And one of the facilitators was actually a Smith alum. So during the program, you know, while we were learning about cybersecurity and, you know, what Deloitte, you know, sort of did in terms of cybersecurity and what they had to offer, we spent a lot of time just, you know, talking to them about their, you know, about their roles and what they did at Deloitte. And so by the end of the program, you know, right before I took my exam, I actually, you know, connected with one of the uh, 
one of the facilitators and she said, you know, reach out to me after you're done with the program and taking your test and we can talk more about, you know, your interests because I was a first year that wanted more hands-on computer science knowledge, but I didn't really know where to look for it because a lot of the opportunities was for, you know, juniors and seniors. And I sort of wanted a, you know, entryway into that, into those positions. So the application process was, you know, it pretty much went that I found out about the application from the alum that I talked to. We just had sort of a very like, you know, sit down, Zoom talk about, you know, my interest in computer science and my interest in, you know, cybersecurity, but also just like other fields like, you know, software engineering and, you know, parallel computing, but I didn't really know where to sort of get that experience. And I asked her, you know, do you have any, is, Deloitte doing anything right now, you know, for first years that I could maybe get to be a part of. And she said, yeah, sure. I, I know a guy from like in talent and recruiting and I can, you know, refer you to him. And then, so I was referred to, uh, you know, Neil to talk to about the program. And he said, you know, I, you know, you should definitely apply to the discovery internship. I think he would be a great fit. And so I applied and it was a very quick turnaround time. I had to, you know, prepare a cover letter for the first time in about like a day. So I went to Lazarus and they really helped me out with that. Like we got it done within the morning of, you know, submitting an application. So that was a huge help. And then uh, it was very, very quick turnaround. Like the day after I got a, a request to go interview and I expected very much questions about my academics, about my resume, but it was very behavioral. Like we were just talking about my extracurricular programs, you know, gaming club, uh, you know, uh, the, the Black Student Association here. And it was, it was unexpected, but it went very well from what I could tell at the end of it. And then I sent a thank you letter with any lingering questions I had about the program. And then I got an, an offer a few days after that with a, you know, offer to become a D1 cyber intern, which I was very ecstatic about. So here, so there's about like three parts of my summer here. These are actually like pictures of one of them's of the office that I worked at, which is the 30 Rock office in Rockefeller Center in New York City. And that was, and the uh, picture right above that is Deloitte University, which was where we were flown off to for a week to go do, to undergo training to learn more about the company, but also, you know, network with a lot of the uh, other interns, you know, from all across like the states. So it was a really great experience. And it was also really pretty over there. In and it was my first time in Texas. So I really loved that state. It was very hot and I, I enjoy the heat. So here are more pictures of my experience at Deloitte University. It was a lot of team building with the team that we were actually going to work with in the next two weeks of our program. I, half of our team was from uh, Georgia. So we got to just meet in person for the first time. And there was also a lot of social networking events. Like there was a disco night, which was a lot of fun. So we just sort of, you know, it was a lot of fun, but it was also a lot of like, you know, really like getting down to the nitty gritty of what we would be doing for the rest of the summer. And for the first two weeks of the program was basically a project simulation that we had to do, which was uh, we were making an acquisition recommendation to a smart technology company uh, that was looking to expand into, you know, different areas of smart technology. And so we were looking at other companies that were up for acquisition and, you know, researching which one would be the best one to acquire. And it was a very structured schedule for us. And, yeah, and we sort of had like daily deliverables every day to fill out like, for example, SWOT analysis. I was doing a lot of things that I had never done before, like financial forms. I had never known what a pro forma form was before this internship, but you know, there I actually learned alongside with my teammates. And speaking of my teammates, we were actually a very mixed group. I was expecting to be placed in with other cybersecurity interns, but no, it was a, you know, I had like tax interns in my group. We had consultant interns, uh, audit and assurance interns. It was very, you know, mixed and like unexpected. Um, we also had like daily meetings every day with our project manager. So it was very much a, you know, sort of like very realistic project experience. And, you know, in terms of a realistic experience, I'd say that they gave us a lot of curveballs. Like there were days when we had like, a, like, you know, a call with a tax uh, senior manager to talk about, you know, whether or not this company has better, has better taxes than, you know, this other company, which may have weaker financials. And there were times during the calls when the manager would seem distracted or, you know, like, you know, they would just sort of, it was it, like, it, like, like, it, and we had to sort of like redirect them to get our questions answered. And then by the end of the call, they were like, oh, you know, I was testing you to see if you guys could really keep up and redirect without, you know, with, 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 like in a very nice way. And so it was curveballs, but it was very fun experience.
And then the last two weeks of the program was a, you know, sort of pro bono experience where we sort of gave a recommendation to a nonprofit organization to help them develop a program that they were trying to use to do more outreach work. And it was much less structured compared to the first project that I had. Like the first project was very much like you had blocks of time with where you had to do work and then blocks of time where you were given a break. But, you know, we sort of didn't have to have a deliverable until the end of the two weeks. So I had more time on my hands. But that meant that I just I didn't really like, you know, waste that time or anything like that or dilly dally. I sort of like made the time to meet with people in the office, have coffee chats with people who were in roles that I really admired and I wanted to learn about. So that was a lot of fun. Um, my team this time was not comprised of the Georgia half of the team. It was actually another team based in North Carolina. So we were doing a lot of remote work most of the time. So I had a lot of experience in, you know, uh, you know, talking online and then like sending over files and things like that. And there was also like a lot of like I would also say in between all of these, you know, deliverable uh, work-ins and things like that. You know, we had a lot of time to just like. You know, just have fun sometimes like we played categories whenever we had like a sort of break so that's actually a picture of a category around that I believe we won for the first time in the New York office. <laughs> and here are some pictures of actually the network and opportunities that was you know afforded to us you know since we had sort of time on my hands to just like you know either relax or just like you know explore the company. Uh, it was really great to actually use that time to you know have coffee chats, have, you know, lunch dates with people. And even just like there's a picture of me walking around with one of my teammates in New York City. And that's us by like the Rockefeller stat statue. So I'd say that uh, what I really learned about from this experience was, you know, how to adapt to different and often unexpected situations. I feel like I, you know, in school, like I'm sort of just like I have my daily expectations, like I go to class, I answer questions and I just do my homework afterwards and go to office hours. But, you know, here it's very much like, OK, you have like this daily thing to do every day and you and, and you basically if you get it done before you know, the end of the day, then you pretty much have all the time to do whatever you want after that. And that isn't really like, you know, and while you can use that time to like, you know, just take a breather, it's also a time for you to like learn different skills. Like I know my teammates were working on Excel and things like that. And, you know, me personally, I was just like talking to people in the office and grabbing coffees with people. So it also really uh, taught me about the fact that, you know, it's like things also like serious, but never to the point of excessive stress. Like, I feel like our team dynamic really relied on the fact that, you know, we could get stuff done, but we also had a lot of fun doing it. Like there were a lot of jokes after that one call with the uh, senior manager, you know, we were all like laughing about it later on because we didn't expect it to be that way. And also just like, you know, daily category every day. Like if we finish this whole analysis before 3 p.m., you know, we're going to play categories right after that. That's the sort of thing that it was. Um, making the most of my time, you know, that also ties back into, um, you know, taking the time to really like networking isn't really about, you know, just networking isn't as complicated, I guess, as I think that it, it might seem at first. Like it really is just like talking to people who, you know, not even people that are in roles that you really want, but just maybe just people who you find really cool in the office. Like I remember I talked to a, you know, operating officer in the office and it was just like a chat about how he got to his position. And that was, you know, a, you know, that was just an experience to really learn from someone else's footsteps in their life. I feel like, uh, you know, now that I'm back at college, I feel like I've definitely put a lot of more intentionality into what I do every day. For example, I am, you know, I always really valued my social time beforehand as just like a way for me to maintain my sanity during my classes, but also as a way to, uh, you know, but now it actually is as a way to sort of, you know, say that, okay, I'm actually taking the time to develop my social skills here and also just like, you know, be social because that's what's important in the real world. You have to be able to like collaborate and that really came to the forefront of my experience at Deloitte. That's a little picture of me in the Empire State Building because you can see it from one of the windows. Really cool. And that's uh, it, yeah. Really appreciated all of your photos. They're just fantastic and paint a wonderful picture of your experience. Thank you. All right, we're going to pull up Simi's presentation if you'd like to come up to the podium. Sorry, my ability to speak and do at the same time is not. <laughs> Let's see. All right. There. 
we go. All right, thank you. Hi, my name is Simi Chima. Um, I'm an econ and math major at Smith. Oh, shoot, sorry. I'm an econ and math major at Smith. Um, and this past summer, I was able to work with the Mezzanine Fund, um, which is a private debt firm in Cleveland, Ohio. And I was able to do that through the summer on the Cuyahoga program. Um, so the Mezzanine Fund is a provider of flexible debt capital, which I'll explain later on. Um, which is focused on providing this capital to middle market companies owned by women and people of color. And I'll again, expand on why women and people of color later. Um, and I was able to do this through the summer on the Cuyahoga program where I lived with about 40 other interns in Case Western um, Reserve University dorms. Um, part of that program is going to a lot of different events, um, but really the big advantage of that is I don't know anyone in Ohio. So I was able to really meet a lot of people from other schools um, and network with a lot of different professionals in different industries in Cleveland. Um, so the purpose of the fund is to invest in lower middle market companies. So the middle market is technically defined as anything from 1 million to 1 billion companies with that sort of revenue. So it's a very wide ranging, um, and it's range of companies. Um, and the purpose is to invest in companies without really allowing these founders to like lose their equity ownership of those companies, um, to really grow them and develop them and not take any ownership stake. Um, and it's very different from traditional capital pathways through mezzanine debt financing. Um, so the fund was founded by Ann Ritchie, who was a Smith alum. Um, she, I don't, I'm not entirely sure when she graduated, but she went to Umich Raw School of Business afterwards, which is a very great business school. Um, so these are some of the kind of terms of our loans. Um, so the goal was to raise 100 million in capital and give about, about 25 loans to different companies, around 2 million. Um, and so the term of the fund is um, 10 years. These loans are unsecured or on second lien co collateral, which means they're not as secure um, as like maybe a first collateral loan would be, but that kind of really shows how confident Anne was in the companies that she invested in. Um, we invested only in a bit of, um, a bit of positive companies. So meaning they all had very strong financials, very strong management teams. Um, and we did a lot of due diligence. So the reason we invested in primarily companies with women and um, people of color founders was because of the lack of capital access th that these founders have. Um, in, one, in 2022, only 1% of VC funding went to black founded companies and 1.9% for women. Um, mezzanine debt is very different from VC, but the numbers are very similar. Um, and investments in women founders are less than half of what male founders receive, which is very, it's crazy. So, and also um, these, non-diverse counterparts, so women and people of color, they outperform their um, counterparts. So in 2022, the middle market suffered a lot. Um, revenues were down, but they rose in um, companies owned by women and people of color by 22% and 19% respect, respectively. Um, WBEs are women-owned businesses and MBEs are um, minority business enterprises. Um, and all of these companies, well, companies in the top quartile for diversity, really outperform at companies who are not in there. So this can be anything like from small companies to huge corporations. Um, and revenue generation is very different. So women return 78 cents on the dollar compared to companies owned by men who return 31 cents on the dollar. The stat is from BCG, so shout out Ali. Um, and so this is kind of an explanation of what mezzanine debt is. Going into this internship, I had no idea what mezzanine debt was. Um, it was very complicated to me. I didn't even know what private investment, like how that field really operated. So the purpose of mezzanine debt is to not take equity ownership and to really focus on scaling these companies. Um, so with maybe venture capital funding, say your company is worth hundred million. So your, your founder has hundred million equity, and then you go into your first round of seed capital, and then you raise hundred million. That means you only have 50% ownership of your company. And with each successive round of, um, seed capital and this capital investing, you lose a lot of equity ownership in your company. And same with private equity, you just lose equity and you lose ownership. So the purpose of the fund is to increase that, like keep that ownership for the founder. Um, and this also makes the valuation a lot more attractive to banks and other investors, which increases opportunities for capital access. Um, so you kind of have a claim on that company's assets and not their ownership, which also decreases that risk.
So my role, I worked alongside Anne and a fellow and then another intern from U Chicago. So a lot of what I did towards the, like my, op, my tasks really changed throughout the course of the internship because of the youth of the fund. It was founded in 2021. Um, so at the beginning, I did a lot of sector research specifically within the medical logistics space. Um, mental health tech and transportation logistics because these companies are very, they have stable streams of revenue, so um, lower risk investments. Um, and I did, it, it was a variety of operations. So I one day came in and Anne asked me, um, one of our potential investments was in a medical company that really relied on this certain bill that she wanted me to investigate the political sentiment around that to see if the margins of that company would be able to be maintained throughout its lifespan. So I did a whole day of just policy research on a healthcare bill that I had never heard of before. I knew nothing about policy research, but it was really interesting. And by the end of the day, I had a pretty good report drawn up. Um, and a lot of what I did was outreach and sourcing. Um, finding and sourcing privately on companies is not easy at all because you can't investigate their financials like you can with a public company. You just can't pull up their 10K and look at their revenues. You have to investigate their websites, investigate their founders, and again, do a lot of cold outreach. So. Throughout the um, tenure of my internship, I really kind of honed in on my outreach skills, being able to pitch what the fund's mission was, how we could help them, and why specifically wanted to, we wanted to invest in them. And I also worked on developing the pitch deck. So a lot of my work was sourcing data, which is, again, very difficult for the middle market because of how broad that industry is, um, and really just making a case for potential investors in the fund. Um, so with my takeaways, I learned a lot about private finance in general. Um, I really had not known much about it prior to going into this internship. Um, so it was great exposure to a new market and how that market operates. Mezzanine debt is pretty complicated and so I was able to really gain a lot of exposure to that. And it's been a great talking point in interviews since. Um, and also I was able to understand different inequalities within finance. I had not known the really drastic state of how women and people of color are underinvested in within finance. So that was really great exposure. Um, and I was really able to advance my career goals in the way that I saw how Anne built her fund from the ground up and used her past career experience in banking and restructuring um, to kind of establish her goal and her thesis for her fund and see how she went about managing that because my own future goal is to manage my own fund of some type. So that was really great exposure. And there were also great networking opportunities through SOTC. Um, we went to a lot of events. And so through those networks, I was able to meet a lot of other people within finance in Cleveland, um, I met this really interesting guy who worked in um, solar finance and had great conversations with him and so many other conversations with different people through Anne's connections and the program's connections. Um, and I also really got to see how you can use finance for good. Um, the purpose of Anne's fund and her mission is so, um, it's really, really valuable and it's, it's just really inspiring. So that was great to see um, how to really use financing in a meaningful way. Um, and also be able to like really see how we can support companies that have historically lacked a lot of opportunities to capital access. And middle market companies are the driving force behind the American economy. So that was again, really great um, exposure. Um, and also really solidified my interest in finance and that this is what I wanna do. Um, so which is really valuable going forward with different career prospects because of how broad the financial services industry is and there's so many different jobs within there. And when you're applying to jobs, you see all of these different job descriptions and it's kind of hard to understand what they actually mean. Um, so getting exposure to like, this is what private investments is. Um, and also talking to Anne and kind of leveraging her connections and just her so much knowledge of what finance is with her was really valuable. And coming back to Smith, so I've been able to really focus in on what I want to learn and what I want to focus on. So like being able to actually like more, efficiently leverage the career sources that I use back at Smith and the courses that I want to take um, and the internships I want to pursue. Just everything has been super valuable. Um, great learning experience. And also the summer on the Cuyahoga program was really made this internship what it was. Um, I met so many different people from different schools and other professionals within Cleveland and just throughout her network everywhere. So yeah, it was a very great experience and very valuable experience. Thank you. What an amazing experience. And uh, we also love to hear when you get to partner with a Smith alum like that. So thank you, Jenny. Uh, let's see, so we have one more presenter. Uh, there she is, our virtual presenter, Allie. 
And uh, uh, Emily, are we all set up for her to be able to share her screen? Okay, perfect. So I will let Allie take it from here. Hi, everyone. Um, are you able to? I hope you guys are able to hear me. Um, but okay, great. So hi, everyone. My name is Allie. Um, I'm class of 2025. And this summer, I worked at Boston Consulting Group in the New York office. That's a picture of the office I worked at. It's, it's really gorgeous. Um, and just a little bit about me. Um, so I'm currently a junior studying abroad in Geneva, which is why I'm virtual right now. Um, I'm a quantitative economics major with a government minor concentrating in global finance. I was a former president of Smith College Consulting Group, and I'm currently the chief consulting officer at Impact Initiative. And I could go on about um, the recruiting process for consulting, but if you do want like a look at what that's like, I really encourage you to apply to Impact Initiative, which is a great way to get um, your feet wet in the industry, in the business world as a whole. Um, and before BCG, I was in political consulting my first year summer and doing a part-time internship as a research intern. And a little bit about BCG, it's a global strategy consulting firm focused on providing advice to Fortune 500 companies and governments. It's part of um, MBB, which are the big three consulting firms where consulting is really the main business stream and bread and butter of the company. Um, it covers a range of industries, really anything from healthcare to fashion and luxury to social impacts any, and like government work, anything under the sun, really. Um, and the case types are business functions also vary greatly. For example, you could be evaluating a strategic risk, which is what I was doing, um, launching a product in a new market, streamlining business operations. So there's a really large variety of like cases to be staffed on. Um, but for me personally, my case this summer was with the corporate finance and strategy team, which is a little bit unconventional because instead of being assigned to like a case team, I was assigned to a business function team. And this meant that our team was really small and I had lots of exposure to top management. So just for context, I was my team comprised of my project leader, um, a partner, and then the head of the business function in like the world. So it was really crazy getting to be able to work with people who are so tenured, who are so established in the field and actually be, being able to like have mentorship from them. In fact, right now we still have like an email chain going of like happy Thanksgiving and happy new year. And I think that's something that I did not imagine like coming into a company as big as BCG. Um, and within that division, what my main project was, was that we were really focusing on a new risk offering debt. So we were really building up a new product that its main goal was to streamline internal and external data nodes in order to allow CEOs to anticipate risk. And I know that's a lot of buzzwords, but basically what it means is that we were creating a product that would help CEOs optimize strategic risk in a way that they weren't just acting preventively, um, but they were really taking, like making the most out of new risks that were popping up and leveraging that to their company's advantage. And so I was creating the deck and the offering about that. Um, and I got to present that to, again, really top management, which, which was super cool. Um, and then the secondary tasks that somewhat came a little bit later on the summer, once we had wrapped up um, the risk offering de deck was the strategic risk report. And so really what we were doing was that before I had joined the team, they had sent out the survey um, to top 500 CEOs, clients of BCG, to really understand like what their top, what was on their top of mind when it came to the risk landscape and how they were prioritizing um, like their next, next action items. Um, so what my main goal was, was to really create a metrics to help rank those risks and understand like, okay, based off of what industry, what are the top risks there based off of the global market as a whole? What are the top risks there? And that would really guide um, the way in which we would like structure our offerings um, for moving, moving from there. And I had lots of standout experiences, honestly, coming up with ways to really distill it was pretty difficult, but I think there were four main ways that I can really distill those standout um, professional experiences. And the first is the ability to refine and develop communication skills through the creation of decks and presentations to senior management, um, regardless of what 
case you're staffed on in consulting. I think the main tool of communication is really a deck, regardless of how informal um, the presentation is. You know, people are always falling back on a deck to really like give a presentation. Um, and so I was making a lot of slides this summer and really learning how to craft a slide. What makes what is the best way to really get this point across and communicate it and even to the point of when I was, I remember I was giving a presentation to like the global head of the division and he asked me to justify like a certain language that I chose to use when talking about the risk offering deck. And that just shows how much thought is really put um, into the, the types of communication that goes out. And then on a smaller scale, also learning best communication practices with my supervisor. So really learning um, how to best communicate with him, how people have different working styles. Um, in consulting, typically, you know, you're staffed on a case and then you move cases. So it's really important to be able to learn how to adapt to different working styles. And um, it's a pretty common practice to actually check in with people who they had worked with before in order to make sure that, you know, their pet peeves, you know what to avoid. And you start off that relationship with some pretty good rapport. And the second point is really synthesizing and absorbing information. Um, I started off this summer having no background in risk at all. And so being thrown into this team, there was a lot of material about this new offering, like the things that they had prepared, the background research. And so it was pretty overwhelming. Um, but really what worked was methodically going through what was already there synthesizing that, checking in with my project leader during check-in and check-out meetings and being like, this is what I understand. These are my takeaways and these are what I envision to be my next steps. So really having that sort of guidance um, from my project leader, but also for myself in terms of creating structure in a place where, you know, there was so much information. It was really up to you how you wanted to go about digesting that. Um, and it came to a point where I was actually able to synthesize those existing like the existing information, build upon that by comparing it to competitors and actually creating frameworks that would enable for future rollout um, once the product goes live. And the third thing that I learned was really leading with a solution. So like when finding an issue or having a question, approaching it as, um, so I have this question and because of that, I was thinking to do this and always having what your next step is gonna be as opposed to just going in and being like, hey, I have this question. And one of my proudest moments was actually being able to spot a data discrepancy in the survey results um, for that second project that I was talking about earlier. And there was a discrepancy between the, um, between the qualitative and the quantitative data. And when I was flagging that to my supervisor, um, it, I approached it and I had already brainstormed about possible solutions because I anticipated that he would ask me about what those next steps might look like. And it came to a point where they actually adopted that solution. And I felt pretty good about myself in that moment. Um, so that taught me a really huge, a huge lesson there. And the fourth thing is really having improved networking skills. I think having exposure to senior management so early on allowed me to really build connections within BCG and understand what a future career would look like there. I remember getting to meet the global head of strategy who is a brown immigrant woman, which was awesome. And she was just amazing. And I had never thought that I would actually get to talk to someone as tenured as her like the CEO of BCG was flying into the New York office to have conversations with her. So to be able to have that one-on-one -on -one chat and also recognize pieces of myself within her and also hear advice from her personally about what it's like being a woman in the business world, it was so, um, it was something that I will always like remember throughout the course of my career. Um, and I remember one piece of advice that she gave me that will always stand out was that um, you know, in a room of black and navy suits, she always makes sure to wear like a standout color. She was like, as a woman, you're going to stand out in a room anyway. So you might as well um, like create that first impression right from the get go. Um, and beyond that, you know, consulting is also a very client facing um, industry. And so we were talking to a lot of clients and things like that. And so you really learn how to adapt and communicate based off of the situation and create those connections as well um, as you go along. And beyond the, the desk, um, I think BCG offered a really great um, associate experience on the whole. Um, first thing is that we had a really collaborative associate class. This is a picture from um, our end of summer party. That was really great. I actually got to bring a plus one who's a Smithy who's in the room now and is gonna be in the consult in the government panel. So hi, Koki. Um, but I also got to make some of my best friends through the internship. Um, 
to the point where like we're visiting each other during study abroad and you know we're planning on when we come back next summer at BCG like what we're going to do so we really got along very well and there was a really strong sense of collaboration as opposed to competitiveness and I would say that BCG has a strong feedback culture um, so in the sense it forces you to grow you know the starting point off of your KPIs are you and what you bring to the table as opposed to like comparing that to your peers which I really appreciate. Um, the second thing is that there's a really strong work hard, play hard culture. You know, though we worked pretty long hours, there's a strong culture of celebration too. We had so many intern events, we had smaller team events, and we even had huge office events. So there's a picture from when we went to the Mets game and there were like actually three BCG boxes, one for the New York office, one for like the grad school interns and then the undergrad interns. So there was a really strong culture of support from other BCGers. Um, I'm like still close to a bunch of associates right now who when I come back are going to be consultants. So I think that just goes to show um, how even though we're working long hours, we're also building that sense of community in the workplace. Um, and the third thing I think is its commitment to social impact and DEI. So I think that one thing that really stood out to me was how BCG emphasizes diversity and inclusion with multiple affinity groups and month long celebration for like various causes. For example, this was at the pride boat that we had where there was like a drag queen performance and it was just awesome. Like the amount of support that people have for diverse individuals is huge and we also have a lot of pro bono work for example we have a fund that goes a private equity fund that is exclusively um for companies that are owned by with like boards that are full of people of color which i think is super important coming from um coming from a huge company like ours supporting that change in the business world and I would say that my key takeaway was really that it confirmed my desire to work in consulting. Um, like I mentioned before, I'm coming back to BCG New York next summer. Um, and I think it's really because I had such a great experience this past summer. I think there are four main things that really led me to this takeaway. And the first is that it's an opportunity to constantly be learning and creating an impact. You're staffed on different cases. You can like look you're constantly learning. I came in knowing nothing about risk and coming out knowing so much. Um, and you're also creating an impact. I don't think there's any, or there are very few careers when you can enter as like a 20 year old and really be in a room with Fortune 500 CEOs and giving them advice on how to run their company and actually being heard. So I felt that my impact was really appreciated. The second thing is that it was a collaborative work setting that's fast paced, but there was also no office competitiveness. So you had that kind of like fast paced like lifestyle in New York, but at the same time, it was just really strong community within the office itself that I thought created a great working uh, work life balance. The third thing is the exposure to different industries, countries and people you can get staffed virtually anywhere in the world, really, um, if you apply for it. And you can be staffed on so many different types of cases. I came in no, like not being interested in private equity at all, but because BCG specifically combines private equity with ESG and is a thought leader there, that is something that I'm like suddenly really interested in. And the fact that I'm continuing to learn about, to, that I'm continuing to learn about all these different niches really show um, like what that commitment to learning and exposure to different industries really look like. And the fourth thing is that it's a corporate setting that doesn't compromise by values because of its commitment to social impact. Um, when I came to Smith at first, I was pretty resistant to joining the business world, um, but because I wasn't sure about how that social impact front would be treated, but like coming into this company where it's using so much of its resources to actually get like, to have these strong boundaries and like, um, and instill these morals into the workplace itself and into their clients as well. I think that's really something that is admirable and that I want to be a part of. And these are some pictures from the summer. This was my intern class for the undergrads. Um, this was me at like floor, one of the floors open. And so they were giving out these hats. <laughs> and this was the view from the Hudson Yards office, which was a really nice view. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, it was a great experience and I'm really excited to come back next summer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Allie. Really appreciate it. And I, I had your location uh, completely wrong. I had you on the other side of the world in my head. So um, thank you for joining us from Geneva. And so now we can move to our Q&A um, portion of the uh, panel. And I know our panelists let me see how I can get this so it's not just Allie up on the screen. 
in the meantime, if we have panelists who have questions here in the room, uh, we invite you to join us at the microphones that are you can see around the room if anyone has any questions. And we'll also monitor the Zoom chat to see uh, questions that may come in. All right, well, we're, we're getting some wonderful messages in the chat about the wonderful presentations. I think one thing that uh, really stuck out to me, and I don't see any questions right now, but I think one thing that really stuck out to me when I talked with all of you about your presentations was just the, the thread about um, working in a corporate environment, uh, working in, in business that would Ali just alluded to, but also having the social impact um, and, and realizing that you can make a difference through careers in finance or business or consulting and also tie it back to your values and social impact. So I thought that was a great thread. Um, and also the just the, the notion that these, these experiences um, kind of offered you the, the opportunity to network and to meet people that um, you can continue relationships with. So I liked that thread as well. Um, I don't see anybody in the room and I don't see any, and anyone on the chat here that has a question, but um, I guess a question that we might ask is um, what kind of advice would you have for students that might currently be looking for internships within these fields? And anyone can go in terms of who wants to answer that question. Um, but any thoughts you might have on other than what you shared in your presentations? Sure. So my internship was, was with the Smith alum. So I think the biggest thing, and especially if you're a younger student, like getting those bigger corporate internships is not, they don't even have, many of them don't have roles for the younger students. So I think really one of the most important things is leveraging the Smith network. There's a lot more Smithies working in business than you think. Um, so really just like any cold outreach or just searching for Smithies on the social network, stuff like that, um, and asking for opportunities, they can refer you to someone else or they can, maybe they're interested in you. Um, really lever leveraging that is really important in your younger years. And even when you're applying for bigger jobs, your junior and senior years, um, just LinkedIn messaging anyone you see that works at that company and asking them about their experience. Um, if they think you'd be a good fit, stuff like that is really important. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Um, I just like to echo what Simi said. Um, for my BCG internship, for example, I actually was able to connect with like one of the four Smithies maybe who are working in the BCG North America offices and we connected so much. She was the one who really helped me in terms of the recruiting process and understanding what that looked like. And until today, like she's one of my mentors, even at the workplace when I'm like worried that I don't really want to ask my supervisor something, I'll shoot her a text. And I think that really goes to show how strong that Smith network is. Um, so cold reaching out really works and you don't know who you're going to meet. And I would also say like not to take to heart those rejections. I sent out maybe 70 or more job applications and I had four or five interviews at the end of it. Um, so it's a like really just keep going. I think the job market right now is so difficult, but um, just not taking those things personally and not getting discouraged um, because I think like at the end of the day, like the right thing will really find you. Thank you so much, Allie. That's great advice. Any other questions? I'm trying to monitor the room and the chat. And I don't think we have, we have a lot of kudos on your presentations and a lot of um, people who say it was a pleasure to work with you. So we'll be able to, we'll, be, we'll make sure to sh send the chat messages to you afterwards so you can see all these wonderful comments that are coming in. <laughs> um, well, we're at 528. So um, if there are no other questions in the room. I guess we can wrap it up and, and just say thank you to our wonderful panelists. I just have really enjoyed meeting all of you over the past few months and hearing your stories. 
I think um, you all have such compelling experiences and stories, and I love that you're all tying them back to your career career goals, um, and that you've offered to share these wonderful insights with other Smithies and potential Smithies and our community at large. So thank you very much. Um, and thank you to our Zoom participants who joined us. And I'm sure if anyone thinks of any questions after the fact that uh, you can post it on the Smith Career Connect platform. That's a plug there right there for our Smith Career Connect platform. You can share any questions there. We have a group specific for business consulting, finance and entrepreneurship. Uh, and another small plug is that we are launching our first cohort meeting for our business consulting finance and entrepreneurship cohort next Tuesday. And we'll bring together groups of students who are interested in careers within those communities uh, here in the campus center. And you can register on Handshake. It's pretty informal discussion about career development and uh, for those who are interested in those industries. So few little plugs, uh, but thank you all. Thank you again so much for these presentations and everyone have a good evening.